everyone, it's Mia from Rose Nails by Maria Say Coombs and today I'm just going to run through how I apply eye gel, um, which is a hard gel from Ink London. Um, I'm going to use Pink Mask in this video, I'm just trying to show you that this Pink Mask uh, bo uh, tub is the old packaging and the blush uh, sort of silver one in my right hand here is the new packaging. Um, they come in slightly smaller pots now, but they also come in way bigger pots that are like 50 mil, I think. Um, but yeah, this is the colour I'm going to be using today. I thought I'd choose this one because it's nice and easy to see on camera, hopefully. So I'm going to pretend that this tip is my natural nail and my form. Or you can pretend it's a natural nail and a tip. So I'm going to go over the top of it first with a nice thin layer of gel just to make sure that the natural nail and my tip are joined with my product. That's all I'm doing with this first layer. Sorry if it goes out of focus a little bit. I was trying to keep it all in focus so you could see. So this is just a nice thin starting layer. If I was using a paper form, which is how I normally choose to work, I'm not a fan of using tips, it's just my personal preference, then I would be applying my paper form and using this layer to create my length and my sort of artificial tip and covering the entire natural nail in one thin layer of the gel to make sure that they are connecting. So that's what this layer would be doing. So once you've got your nice thin layer of eye gel on, pop it in the lamp and it's a 30 second cure. So once that's all cured, we're going to go in with another thin layer of gel, which is going to be our slip layer. So you are not curing this once you've applied your thin slip layer. That is what we're going to use because gel likes to stick to gel. So if you put a nice slip layer all the way over the nail, then when you apply your large bead for creating the apex and the shape and the strength, then that gel is going to naturally self-level into this slip layer because the gel wants to stick to other gel. That's how it works. So that's a nice wet slip layer that has not been cured. And I'm going to go in with my much big layer of gel. Excuse the fact that I've just moved my gel out of shot a little bit. Um, but my camera kept trying to sort of focus on the gel and not on the nail. So now I've got my much bigger uh, bead of gel. I'm just going to pillow that up to the cuticle area. And then I'm going to leave most of that product in the apex area where I want it to be. And slide the gel in a horseshoe shape all the way down to the tip of the nail. Getting thinner and thinner as I get towards the tip. Try not to lose contact between your brush and the gel um, because it will, th like having that contact between your brush and the gel will be what guides the gel down to the tip. So just move it all the way down to it's a nice thin layer. And as you can see, I'm a little bit wobbly on the side walls. So to fix this, I'm just trying to get the wobble in the line of light so you can see. I'm going to incredibly lightly tickle down the side walls just to get that gel in a nice straight line. Really, really lightly just using the tip of your brush. So I'm just checking that side as well, but I don't seem to have that problem on that side. And now we've solved the problem and it's a much straighter line of light. The line of light is literally exactly what it says on the tin. It's the uh, light line that you can see going down the nail. So once you've done with that, pop it in your lamp for a 30 second cure. Now that's cured, I've just got a bit of cleanser and cleansed off that sticky layer. You can see I've got quite a nice apex in this. I'm not going to bother with a massive apex on this because it is a tip and it's not on a client. So I'm just trying to show you that there's a little bit of bulk on the right hand side as you're staring down the barrel of the nail. And I'm going to show you how to correct this. So I'm just taking my tip off the tip stand because I cannot file with them on the tip stand because they fall off. And I'm going to do my side walls just to get them nice and straight. Oh, apologies, my phone going off. Right, so to cure this problem of having this little, it's a little bit bulky just here. So I'm just going to sort of show you in slow motion. I'm going to roll the file from the side wall towards the middle of the nail. And I'm just trying to show you that, look, you can see the area that I've hit here with the file where it's um, slightly more matte. And 
because I've gone all the way to the middle of the nail, you can see that that area is sticking out because it's the only bit that my file is touching. So obviously there's a bit of bulk there that needs to be got rid of. So I'm going to be filing from my side walls around to the top of my nail and also contouring the nail. That means to angle it down towards the tip um, to get that nice seamless uh, sort of thinness towards the tip. So I'm going to be doing that all in one swift motion, which I'm going to show you now. It is really hard to show exact filing technique on camera. Um, but I'm hoping that showing, uh, showing you, get my teeth in, showing you in slow motion and then showing you uh, in reality of how fast I'm doing it, then that will help. So you can see that I have filed just this side of the nail so far because that is where the bulk is so I don't really want to file too much of the other side because I don't feel that there's a lot of bulk there that needs getting rid of so I'm just gonna I would not do it this way on a client because obviously their finger is going to be in the way but I'm just sort of getting the cuticle area now which I'm doing very very cat candidly because it is on a tip and I hate working on tips Normally I would file the cuticle area in the normal way just by sort of uh, skimming my file along the cuticle area, making sure I'm holding back um, the client's skin as I do so there we can avoid any cutting. So I'm just going to show you kind of exactly the same thing again but the wrong way round because I'm doing it on a tip. But I'm just showing you that I'm contouring the nail down and rolling the file from side wall to middle as I do it. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to do it on the other side. Again, this is really, really cat handedly. I'm really sorry about that, but I, I can't file properly on tips at all. I'm just trying to show you how I would get rid of that bulk. And then for the rest of the nail, just to get nice smoothness, I'm going to rock my file in a sort of rainbow motion, sort of arch motion, all the way over the nail, just to make sure that there are no dips or uh, little bits poking out or little dips in because if there's a dip in you'll be able to see it it will be shiny the rest will be matte because you've hit it with your file any dips inward will be shiny because you have not hit them with your file and you'll know that you've got a big dip there which you need to sort out with filing because once you top coat it it is going to look really really obvious so I'm just gonna finish filing that now just giving it a nice little rocking motion over the nail and contouring all the way down to get that nice smooth sleek finish all the way down the nail excuse the fact that I am um, using a very old file this is just one that I use on tips and I was just showing you both sides of the file there because I was um, using the harsher side of my file and I'm now going in with the smoother side of my file I'm going in with the 180 side as opposed to the 100 side to get rid of all my dust so if this was on a client, I would also then get my buffer and just buff over the top before applying any top coat. Because this is on a tip, I did not bother. Um, I was trying to do this video very quickly in between uh, the kids running around because it's the summer holidays. Um, so yeah, I would also get my 240 buffer and just buff quickly over the top just to get rid of any sort of etch marks and demarcations from my file before applying top coat. Now you want to make sure that your cleanser, because I've just cleansed off the dust, you want to make sure that that is perfectly dry. You see it's a little tiny bit wet here. So I'm just going to wait a second. I'm just kind of <laughs> flapping it about to try and get it to dry quicker off camera. So you can see that the nail has gone back to matte. Do not apply your top coat when the cleanser is still wet. It will go all funny and horrible and yucky. So I'm just going to go in with the SBD tempering top coat now, which is one of my favorite top coats of all time it's really hard wearing it's super shiny and it's not gloopy to use I hate it when top coats seem gloopy I've used a couple um, that are really good and they are super shiny but they are gloopy to use and I really don't like them so I love this one so I'm just going in with the nice tempering top coat making sure that there's no there was like a little bit of fluff on it that I was just getting rid of and then once that's all nicely top coated, I'm going to pop that into my lamp for 60 seconds. And you can see the line of light there on the nail is really, really nice and really flush. There's no bumps or anything because we filed it to perfection and we've applied our gel really nicely so that there wasn't a lot of filing to do in the first place. So yeah, that is how I apply my Ink London Eye Gel. And... So this is the colour that I've used. I don't even know if this is still made, this colour. I know they have discontinued some colours, but they have replaced them with lots of nice new colours. Um, so if this particular colour is not in stock, then there will be something quite similar. 
So I hope you found this interesting and useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.